Hey, good morning to everybody. Happy Friday. It's Daryl here. It's bright and freaking early, man. It's 3.30 a.m. here in Connecticut on the East Coast. It's another busy Friday. Fridays are so hectic for me because I have to. I try to catch up to all the stuff that I left out during the week that I had put on my list to do. All right. Anyway, I don't want my regular viewers to think that I have abandoned politics and recovery to talk about uh, pop stars or, or movie stars all the time. Um, the fact is I, I come across stories and they remind me of parts of my life. And I, I feel like I have something to contribute to this, something to share because at 57 years old and two and a half decades of hard addiction, hard partying, uh, if you want to call it the sex, drugs, and, and rock and roll lifestyle. Um, I've, Go. I, I've I've got I've done I've been through a lot of interesting things, and I've and more than that. I, I think I, I'd like to think that I've learned some interesting things, and I want to share them with you guys. Some of my experiences, because a lot of you have gone through similar things too. Okay, since Sam asked Gary, as I, I I have tried, I, I've redone this video three times. I you guys know if you watch my channel, I have a block with people's names. I have such a hard time pronouncing people's names. Uh, Sam. Filed for a divorce, TM, you know, and there was a TMZ article on this. And since then, three more, at least three or four more articles have come out, and they're interesting articles. Most of these articles, they're, I'm going to talk about three articles from TMZ, and I could relate to these. I'm going to at the end of this, at the after I talk about these three articles, I'm going to share something with you that popped into my head about one of my relationships, and it's it's a doozy. Like I've told you guys, I like, this isn't bragging. I've, I've loved four women with all my heart. You know, I, I, I know I was in tr you know, true love. I still love them. And I've dated dating women like back when I was using and drinking and everything. Like I said, I, I don't want to sound like I'm exaggerating, but I'm sure it's over. It's in three digits. You know, over a hundred. That I, you know, if we're, we're talking over forty years of dating in my life since I was like fourteen and fifteen years old, and I'm fifty-seven now. It's not a it's not a high number considering the lifestyle I led, and it, this 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 story reminds me particularly of an incident in my life, and I'll talk about that at the end of this. Okay, so there's three articles since yesterday that popped up on TMZ, and I want to share them with you guys. Two of them, TMZ kind of quotes this as saying that people close to Sam have given him this information. Um, so, so it's kind of like a, a second person, you know, they, they heard they, some, somebody's leaking information. Somebody close to Sam S. Gary is leaking information. That's pretty much the, the, the scenario I get here. One of these is an actual uh, talking about Sam posting on, I believe it's on Instagram about his divorce. He's, he's, so he's, he's, this is the first time he's talked about it. So I'm going to talk about these three articles and then I'm going to tell you, a, 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 hopefully it's something I, I learned from this something to do with my life. All right, let me start. This is the most interesting one. These links, the links will all be down below so you guys can read these stories yourselves. Uh, okay, and this first one here, someone close to Sam says, Sam believes that Brittany cheated on him with a house staff member. Now that came up before that she, he believed that she cheated on him. Now, uh, apparently he's saying that it's, it was with a house staff member. Apparently, apparently she has members. I thought she was all alone in that house. I guess I, I, I'm not familiar with how rich movie or how rich stars live. So uh, apparently she has staff. So Sam believes that, uh, he, she cheated on him with, uh, at least one male house staff member. Uh, Sam Asgari is telling people he believes Sam cheated on him with a, a staff member at the house. Sources with direct knowledge tell TMZ that Sam claims that Brittany asked at least one staffer to shoot video of her naked. Uh, that I don't doubt. You know, the, the videos I watched, I, that, doesn't, that doesn't surprise me at all. I, that, that, I wouldn't consider that grounds for divorce. But then he says he believes she hooked up with at least one male staff member. He claims that there's footage of Brittany and the staff are together in compromising positions. So, so Sam's going around saying that there's actual video. I imagine there's security in this house too. There's lots of you know video security cameras. So it, it's not the place you want to do do things you don't want to get caught. Uh, Brittany, this this is interesting, and this this is what made me want to share the part from my life. This this sentence right here: Brittany is in a hypersexualized state. 
and I, I know what they're talking about. This comes along. I, I'm not. I'm not a professional on men, mental illness. I don't know. You know. I'm. You know. I'm. I. I just. I've been around people that have mental issue, mental health issues, and I'll, I'll get into that more in a second. And it, uh, Brittany is in a hypersexualized state, and it contributed to her dangerous decision making and uh, uh, risking her own safety. All right, so that, that's one article. I kind of cut it down for you guys, but the whole article will be down below. All right, the next article is about Sam actually posting. Uh, I believe it's on Inst yeah, it's on Instagram. I'm, I'm just going to sum it up. It's kind of it's kind of what you would figure. He says like after six years, uh, we we we've decided to part ways. Uh, there's still a lot of love and respect we have for each other. Uh, he wishes her best always, and then he asks up the he wants he says. Uh, uh, privacy is too like he said something like privacy is too much to ask for. He won't ask for privacy because he knows you know all the, all the paparazzi. But he said, please uh, let the media please be kind and thoughtful. And so that that's the second article. All right, so here's the the third article, and this is interesting. Uh, and again, this reminds me of things that have happened to me. I, I have never ever ever struck a woman in my life. Never never. Um, like I said, my father died when I was nine. And I, at nine, I considered myself the man of the family. So I grew up with my sister and my mother protected. Like, well, in my mind, I was protecting them. And uh, I have never, ever laid a, a finger, uh, touched a woman. If a woman, you know, the women, if I've dated over 100 women, the women have, I, I've come across violent women that have be begun to struck me, like uh, maybe a few times. And that's, I walk away. The, the relationship is over right at that point. If, if a woman hits me in anger, the relationship is over. You know, because I'm afraid sooner or later, if I keep getting hit, I don't know what will happen. You know, ba that's basically, but if I'm not going to, you know, I, I, I respect the woman enough not to, you know, I, I don't believe love is physically hitting each other. Base, ba that, that sums it up. All right. So he claims Brittany attacked him in his sleep and left him with a black eye while he was sleeping. Now, in this article... There's an actual picture. I'll use it on my thumbnail. And for, when I first looked at it, I didn't see a black eye. And he, he, he asked the photographers not to, to uh, photog not, not to take pictures of him because they asked about the, uh, he's got like, a, it looks like an older bruise. I, I've gotten many of these. Uh, you know, it's got like a yellowish, bluish down here because he's, he's, he's like this way trying to hide it. Like, like I, I could relate to this. I used to do stuff like this. And it, it's, it's a yellowish, bluish, and then a little black under here. So he, he did have a black eye. And apparently... He was very uh, secretive about it when asked about it. Uh, he, he, she, Sam claims he, he, that Brittany punched him in his sleep while he was asleep. She attacked him and started pummeling him. Um, not only that, I believe she, he, uh, he says that he, he had bite marks on his arm at some point. This is, this is further back in this last year. Uh, he talks about TMZ talks about how she has a fascination with knives and you know she's always afraid for her own safety and she has knives scattered all around the house to protect herself I used to do stuff like this too when I was back back in addiction I I, I was paranoid um, so those are the three articles now I'm going to talk you know it, it, the articles pretty much speak for themselves I don't I don't doubt this. I'm not a mental health professional, but I've dated women. Back when I was in my 30s, uh, sometimes women would even come out and tell me, you know, that they were, they, they've been in treatment, that they've actually been in the hospital for a, t a time for mental health issues. And a lot of times these girls, I hate to say this, but it's the truth. You know, I was using back then and it would go in one ear and out the other. I'd see a gorgeous girl in front of me. She was acting what I would consider relatively normal and really sexy and very uh, forward a lot of times. That's what, what it says about uh, Brittany, Brittany being very sexualized. I remember in an episode of uh, How I Met Your Mother, they were talking about somebody, a girl with crazy eyes. Did you, I don't know if you guys ever watched that show. And uh, what's his name? The, the 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 woman's man on that show was doing a graph about how that how, when the crazier when the crazy goes up, so does the the, the sex drive or something like that. And I, I haven't found, I found that to be somewhat true. Uh, like I said, I'm not a mental health professional. Um. So. Like I said, it, it appears that she's had, she has some kind of mental health issues to me. I don't know if it's bipolar or 
schizophrenia. A lot of the women I dated mentioned, I remember hearing the word bipolar. Like I said, they would tell me this. And I was in my 30s, my 40s. I was drinking. I was at the bar. I see a gorgeous hot girl in front of me, you know, touch, you know, her hands on me. She's twirling her hair, you know, sometimes, you know, flirting hard. And when she would say negative stuff like that, like, oh, well, you know, I was in the hospital for a while. I was, I was hospitalized with, you know, in the mental health ward. It just goes in one ear and out the other. My mind just goes, well, she's acting normal now. Good enough. You know, that's that's the person I was. I'm not proud of it, but that's the person I was. I'm going to share with you guys this this one story. I used to go to script bars a lot. I've talked about that. I talked about that in the Britney uh, pole dancing video. You know, at least, you know, a lot of my business when I was using and dealing was in strip bars. A lot of the strip bars around here were owned by bike biker, we'll call them clubs. They like to be called clubs, but they're bike gangs. Uh, I think most of the, the, the strip bars in this area are, are in the background, they are owned or run by biker clubs. And there's a, a lot of, there's all, there's, there's tons of, of dealing and using going on, at least in every one I've been in, every bar, every strip bar I've been in, the dancers, the the people, you, every, everybody there was using, and that's that's my experience. It might not be true with all places, but the places I've been in back when I was using seventeen years ago, and uh, I was delivering, I was driving a truck. I, I got fired. I subsequently got fired from that job. I tested a random te a random drug test uh, the day after I used like a, a, a eighth of an ounce of cocaine. I got drug tested and I was fired. It was very stupid uh, driving a truck in those under those conditions. I I know that now. And uh, I was delivering to a store, uh, a big grocery store, and I was putting the magazines up. And there was a woman working there, a manager, and I recognized her. She was a dancer. She was gorgeous, gorgeous girl, long brunette hair, beautiful body. Uh, she was a little older than me. Right now, she'd probably be 60. This is back in 97 or 96 when I was 30 years old. So she was about 35. And uh, I, I was like, I recognize you from the bar. You know, she said, yeah. She, she, she talked a little bit about how she had a drug problem. And she went into, re, into recovery, into the hospital for her, into re, recovery places. And now she works as a manager. I, like I said, I'm not proud of this story either because I, I, I'm, I, I'm guilty in this story too. So we talked and we ended up meeting up and we went out maybe three or four times, maybe three times at the most. And she, she told me that she had mental health issues too. Like, I don't know if it was bipolar. I, honestly, I wasn't listening and I should have. And after the second or third date, she slept over at my house. After the first date, the very first date, I left for work and I left her in my apartment on the third floor and I locked the deadbolt as I left. And after, at the end of work, I was going home and I realized, I was like, oh my God, she's been in my house all day. I locked the deadbolts. There was no way for her to get out of the house. I was gone for 10 hours. I was like, oh my God, I locked her in my house for 10 hours. You know, I got home and she was fine with it. She was still sleeping. She wanted, she, you know, she was more than happy to stay there. So I was relieved at that point. The second date, um, I'm getting getting ready to go up to work, go to work in the morning. She slept over, and she asked. This is only after the second date, and she asked me if she could do my laundry. Now I've been a single guy for you know I'm used to doing my own stuff. I cook for myself. I do my own laundry. You know I I'm, I'm fine with that. I've always done that. And it was a little weird after just two dates. I'm not going to give some a girl my laundry because you know she wanted to take it and go do it somewhere. So I was like, no, you know, you know, after two dates, I'm no, you know, so I said, no, thanks. I appreciate it, but no. So I went to work and she locked, she locked up. I, mean, I didn't lock her in the house this time. Like I said, I didn't do that on purpose, just so it's clear. I came home that night. Every piece of clothing that I owned was gone. No notes, no, no messages from her. My socks, my bathrobes, my pants. My, my, I used to wear underwear back then. My, my underwear, my shirts, uh, everything. Every stitch of clothing, like two or three totes full of clothing, clothing gone. So I'm, I'm freaking out. You know, and I got a pretty good idea. She took it. I don't, I, she's not answering her phone. About three hours later, I get a knock at the door. And I go to, I'm on the third floor. And I go to answer the door. And she's standing there, and she starts talking, and she she brought the three totes up the up the three flights of stairs. She had them right there, 
and I just she started talking. I was like, "Whoop, just zip it." I was like, she she went she started to come in the door. And I said, "No, you stay out there." I brought my clothes inside the door. I kept her outside the door because I didn't I knew this was this good, you know, I, I at that point I had learned, you know, things if a woman gets angry and violent, a lot of times the guy gets in trouble for it. So I just I wanted to keep her outside of my house, outside of my apartment. I brought the clothes in and I just shut the door and that was I it's over. Don't call me, don't don't you know, don't I never saw her again. Um I want to mention this too. This was weird. Uh, she had this trick she did went back when she was dancing and she would use matches and she would like matches from a matchbook and she would open up the bottom of the match and paste them. Like she made herself like a human candle on stage. That was like one of her tricks. And I thought that was, you know, back when I was using and going to strip bar, I thought that was really cool. You know, this girl I'm dating does this birthday. She makes herself into a birthday cake. You know, and, but here's the thing, you know, she told me that she was clean and I just, I didn't care. And every time we went out, those, those, those two times, I went and bought cocaine and I used it right in front of her and I got her to use. Um, I ran into, I, I, her mother recognized me later at a store somewhere and her mother just ripped into me because I pretty much, uh, messed her up I, I i she started using again after that and she lost her job i mean I, I i talk in these videos about how you have to be very careful around people people live like I, I people will tell me that they're like when i say i'm clean people say me too and i learned that's not true you know and a lot of times they're people they, they just want to get you using so they because they know you have money because you've been clean for a while and I, I, like I said, I used to do stuff like that. I was no angel. The reason I know this is because a lot of times I did this stuff, you know. So I wasn't, you know, her, me being in her life, I, I ruined, I wrecked her. the way I look at it. I, I damaged her life pretty severely too, you know. So it wasn't all just her. But when we're talking about mental health issues and stuff, I knew she had mental health issues. And this was only after two dates, you know, and she took all my clothes and she was gone with them for all day. And, you know, there was just other, other, other signs, like, like being locked in my house for the whole, the whole entire day from six in the morning till six at night. And she was fine with that, you know, like she didn't, I don't think she even noticed, you know, that there's little signs like that. And, uh, you know, back when I was using, I would just, I wouldn't pay attention, you know, when, when somebody would tell me that they've had mental health issues. Not that that's the reason not to date them, but you have to know, you have to be aware of somebody else's health conditions. You know, you have to pay attention to that. It's important. It could, for your own safety and for the other person's safety. The things I've learned, like I said, me, me going with her didn't do her any good either. You know, because I was using at the time and she was clean. And I, I, I ruined, I ruined her recovery. So, uh, I'm not, I'm not innocent in this either. All right. Just like I wanted to share it. And this whole hypersexualized thing with Brittany, it reminds me of the first thing that came to my mind was this, this woman, this, this woman that, uh, I dated a couple of times and took all my clothes. It reminds me of her and her birthday cake trick and whatnot. All right. You guys, the links will be down below. I see I'm running late. Hey, I'll be late. I'll be back later with another video. Have a good Friday.